Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Minecraft and as ever we're here in the Dungeons Dragons and Space Shuttles mod pack and I've been making some progress. So it was, as you've probably noticed there wasn't there wasn't a video last week because I was away on holiday so the, the stream didn't ha well the stream didn't happen for me other people did come come along and and did a few little things and we'll talk about those in a bit of in, in a bit um, a bit later on but this time I've been playing around with doing some more of the magic quest lines and I've done some more of the dark magic stuff. Um, so actually looking around here, a few things have happened since that I haven't talked about. So someone, and I believe it was probably Tristan, has come along and put this chest and hopper and another chest and presumably some sort of emptying system down there on top of my um, blood infuser. And that means that you can put things like... Um, iron blocks or coal or whatever you want to be infused with blood into the chest on the top it'll be put into the blood infuser automatically infused with blood from this enormous these enormous tanks here and then dumped into this chest here when there's um when there's a sufficient quantity, when, when, when it's, been, it's been infused. And this is useful because infusing blood does think, uh, it, infusing some of the things with blood increases its effectiveness. Um, oh yeah, so there we go, there's a, um, a, a hopper underneath it as well that's pulling stuff out and putting it into the chest as you can see. Um, yeah, so some things are made more effective by soaking in blood, like coal, for example, and fertilizers. So it, it, it's kind of worth doing, and it makes these things run a little bit more effectively. And we have more blood than we know what to do with, so having some way of using it up is also quite nice. However, that's not what I'm here to talk about. I want to talk about this blood altar here, which, despite being right next to the blood tanks, has absolutely nothing to do with the blood. It's a different type of... Well, it's a different type of blood, not to put too fine a point on it. And so we've got this thing here that when you when you you when you um, fill it up, you can do it by basically causing yourself pain. So there's a sacrificial dagger here. If I if I pick that up, and then I can use it like this. And as you can see, my health goes down, and the amount of blood in the um, in 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 the altar increases, and this this orb, which I shall get back to in, in, in a little bit later, sparkles. Now. If, for example, you don't like using um, poking yourself in the finger with with a knife because that's a bit too um, a bit too masochistic, you can instead grab the um, this thing. This is another thing I made. This is a blood letters pack, and it's a type of it's sort of a type of armor. Except when you put it on, instead of armoring you and protecting you from damage, it causes you a small it causes you damage over time. As you can see, my I'm getting gradually hurt a little bit, and it's keeping my there we go like that. And it won't it won't trigger if my health is below 50%. But as long as my health is above 50%, it'll continually it'll do it'll jab me every so often with the uh, the spikes in the armor and take a little bit of health away from me, which is put magically into this um into this oh no sorry it's not put into the blood altar it's put magically into the armor. As you can see, it currently stores 500 LP. Next time, it, there we go, 600 LP, and it gradually over time it gradually picks up. And in this game, if you in, in this mod pack, if you have um, if you're fully satiated, so if you eat this caramel apple, it probably won't do very much because it's only just a, a sweet thing. It's not very nutritious. Let's let's eat an onion hamburger instead. So I eat through that, and now I've got the the well-fed um, buff, and that means my health now increases a bit more quickly, as you can see by the hearts at the bottom there, and that means that the um, the blood armor thing can trigger much more often and you get this really distracting effect where it just keeps stealing your health away from you um okay the the well fed has or the the no the satiated sorry where the um where the little heart health things down here go um go go gold has disappeared so i'm not recovering my health quite as quickly as i was before but still it's filling the armor up quite nicely it's now 2700 lp 2800 and so on and so on once that fills up to a an amount you're happy with, you can come over here and just dump it into the into the blood altar like this. I forget how to do this. Um, maybe the blood altar has to be empty. Let's take that out for a second. There we go. Okay, so the blood altar has to be empty to do, for that to work. Then you can put the blood orb back into it. The blood orb twinkles nicely, and so this twinkling effect is when the blood orb is actually filling up, and the blood orb can store, um, I believe, five thousand. Um, life essence but it, although it doesn't show it on there which is a bit of a shame even if I even if I press the show me more information button it doesn't so I'll put it back on there and I shall put the the armor back on here as well so they're they're around the piece so people can use them if they want um, and that that allows you to pick up the life essence and the life essence can then be spent in various different ways in the quest lines there's lots of things that tell you about these so if I go into the black magic um, down here we've got things like um, we've got the 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 
I'll come back to the sigils in a minute, but there are various tools in here that can use life essence and turn it into various useful things, I think. Um, I want, I want, but I want to talk about these sigils in, in a bit more detail. So give me a moment. I should run across the base to where they're, they're stored. Stuff is very spread out in our factory for, um, no, in, in our base for, uh, for cosmetic reasons, but it doesn't mean there's a lot of running around to do. <clears throat> so the most useful thing we've got here is this system that uh, is, allows us to generate lava out of that life force. So up here we've got a lava sigil, a water sigil, and a divination sigil. So if I grab the divination sigil first, it's gone onto the roof, that's helpful. There we go. I can use that, and it tells me down there there is 5,000 LP in the in the blood in the blood orb at the moment. Uh, so that's great. I know there's 5,000 of it to use, so I can put that back up there. If I now take this lava sigil, like that, I can then come around here and I can use the lava sigil. And I talked about this in a previous a previous video. Um, and previously, the, the lava sigil would, would cause you pain when it um, and do a load of damage to you when you created some lava with it. But now I can create a, blump, a lump of lava like that, and you can see the lava go. And now we've got an automated system here. There is a pick up picking up thing in here, and this also has a bucket in it. So when you put lava in there. Um, you see there, you saw the lava, hopefully you saw the lava bucket go up the pipe into there, and now you can see the empty bucket coming back along there, back into the machine. So I can do it again. And each time I do this, it adds a bit more lava to this um, tank. There you go, you see that, see that moved up a little bit there. And so that is using up the, um, the life force that I was just playing with. So now if I grab the um, divination sigil again, we're now down to 3,296. So each time you use it, it uses up a thousand LP, which is what's written on, as it says on here. So it uses a thousand of the life force every single time you use it. However, we've now got three thousand three hundred in there because the um, the blood orb is gradually he, gradually picking up the blood out of the blood altar and recharging itself. So it picks it picks it back up again over time, um, as long as there is um, blood magic available inside the inside the altar for it to be pick up pick up. Now, all of these things are linked together on a what it calls a network, um, and that allows you to, and that's why when I use this, it pulls it from that blood altar over there, and it knows to do that, or rather, sorry, from that blood orb over there, and it knows to do that, rather than just rather than it pulling it from the the health of whichever player uses it, and that means <clears throat> that as long as we've got a system over there that produces sufficient of this life essence, anybody can use these sigils to create. Uh, to create uh, the lava over here, and it will always pull from that loca that single location. Um, and this is probably because we're playing quite cooperatively. That's a good way of doing it, rather than everybody having their own network and their own system. You can also have various tools and weapons and things that will repair themselves using that life force. We've not made any of those yet because it's actually a lot cheaper to use other things, to use use tools that will repair themselves using the Tinker's magic, or possibly. Um, will use lava to repair themselves and we actually to be honest we need to do the maths on that to work out whether it's cheaper to use the sigil to create lava from life force and then use that lava to repair tools in the um, magma anvil over there in the smeltery building or whether you're better off running around with a tool that will just repair itself from using life force there are, there are, we haven't done the maths or at least I haven't done the maths there so I don't know which is going to be better but there are two alternatives there the other advantage of using the tinkers system is that you can have tools that do more clever things so this one here my thwacker has um the biological which means it uh, repairs itself it has i i don't know it has various other things in there like there's fa things that speed it up there's things that make potentially things that make it lucky there's things that make it last longer there's things that make it take less damage it's got various different powers built into it so there's lots of different things you can do with these with with uh, tinkers and some of them are a lot cleverer than anything i've managed to do so far so I'm, I'm going to need to have another look at that and see what i can add on to my tools in the future or maybe just rebuild the tools entirely <clears throat> however that is the um the basics of the um life force blood hurting yourself by poking yourself in the finger with a dagger magic. There's also the coat of arms, which is similar to the blood letters pack. However, this one um, instead gains you, um, means whenever you get hurt in combat, you gain, you gain, um, help, you get, you gain life force in it. So it's potentially useful if you're going out and doing a lot of fighting, but, but at that point you probably want better armor in order to protect you from the fighting you're doing. 
We've also made a lava crystal. So this is a thing that um, can use use your use life essence to power a furnace, which is interesting. Uh, at the moment, coal is significantly less valuable, much much easier to get than uh, life essence. So we're not going to be using this for a bit. But it's it's interesting to know that it's it's a thing that you can use. It could potentially make quite a lot of these lava crystals. And once there's a good supply of the life essence, these could be put in all of the furnaces, anything that requires fuel, and then they'll just automatically use magic. Uh, to, to use the life force to power the thing rather than having to worry about a normal fuel supply and supply and bringing bringing fuel in any other way there's also an incense burner which allows you to um, which I haven't made yet so I'll talk about that in a future episode but essentially that allows you to um, make make your life force from hurting yourself in a more efficient way so that's 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 to come Thinking of armor and armor related things, another thing that has happened recently to, uh, I, I'd say uh, I won't say it's happened to me it's more sort of happened for me. Um, is that I've been given an elytra, and this is basically a, uh, this is basically a wing suit, a, a wing cape. And if I look at my character from outside, you can see he's, he's now got these this cape thing on, and it, and um, if I jump into the air with the slime sling, I can then hopefully. It's difficult. I'm not very good at you. Oh, there we go. I, did, I managed a little bit of a glide there. I haven't quite mastered using this yet, but it allows you to ping yourself up into the air, and then you can glide over extremely long distances like this. Um, and so this is. It's not quite, it. you can't use it to gain height in the same way you can with a slime sling. So it's no use for getting up to the um, the tower or into a building from down here. But it is quite a nice way of um, travelling around, especially if you've managed to get yourself up in, onto a building, potentially with the slime sling like this. This is the sort of simplest way of using it. If you've managed to get yourself, no, let's not use that, let's do this, which is what I actually meant to do. If you've managed to get yourself up into onto a high place like this, or you then use the slime sling to ping yourself even higher. I can then use this to glide across a large quantity of the map with varying levels of success. Now, there's also a, another level you can use this at. I believe I've got, yes, I have got some fireworks. You can, if, you've got, if you've got a supply of fireworks, which are quite easy to make, I believe they're just gunpowder and paper. Uh, once you get yourself into the air and flying with the elytra, you can then use the fireworks to give yourself a bit of a boost. And that allows you to fly around like an absolute lunatic. Um, I haven't really played with these very much yet, so these are quite novel and fun still. But then we can easily fly up and land on the top of the tower like that, um, rather than having to climb up, go up the uh, the lift like some sort of peasant. So this is nice. I seem to be using the like a peasant description quite a lot. I do apologise if that's if it's got excessive. But then from up here you can then use it to fly down, and I can basically reach any part of the uh, the base quite easily with a with a single long glide from the. Um, from the elytra from off the top of the tower so that's quite nice and quite good fun and then I, I shall probably do quite a lot of playing with it and that's not the um and then and then there's also in on the on the sort of subject of interesting things that have been done while i wasn't around let's fly over this way again um al has made an automatic rubber tree so if we come over here this this rubber tree grow grew basically as as trees do um, i'm sure you're familiar with the concept of a tree you have a sapling it grows up into a tree um but more excitingly this here is a controlled miner so if we have a look at this um oh it's been improved actually so what this does if i flick this lever it automatically mines out the tree like this over here we have a play automatic placer which will automatically put down these rubber saplings so another rubber sapling appears there like that and eventually once the tree has been mined away that will eventually over time grow so let's turn this back off again because it uses a lot of power hopefully in the future we'll we'll get to the point where we've got enough power that we can just leave this turned on all the time and it will automatically mine the trees out or alternatively we'll get to the point where we have um <clears throat> Uh, some sort of system of detecting whether there's a tree there or not and turning the system on or this on and off as as required then the um, so the power comes in here up the red cable. Then the, the um, this thing is a what is this? What is this called? A ranged collector. So this will automatically pick up rubber wood, saplings, and sap that are dropped by the um, the tree being deconstructed. And then this this then drops them down through out this pipe here. The saplings go back into here so they can be placed out to grow into another sapling. And everything else goes down this this pipe into the into the draw system down here. Now the draw system has, as you can see, will take in rubber wood and sap and also rubber. And then down here we have an extractor which is turning the rubber wood into rubber. So this is a this is basically not only does it automatically grow the trees and then cut them down, it then also, it then turns them into rubber. So once the um, once these five p 
pieces of rubber wood have been converted into rubber, it will then work, start working on the sap. It can only do one of them at a time, but it will it will get the whole lot done eventually. And we're gradually building up a decent supply of, um, of rubber here. And then presumably, at some point, it will be hooked into the, uh, the long item ducts that go that are, travel somewhere underneath the ground around here somewhere and be taken all the way back to the storage system but that hasn't been done yet that said this is quite an interesting system and at the moment the tree will grow grows naturally there is also this automated user here that can be turned that can be this can be turned on and off in a similar way although it hasn't been given a switch yet and this can can feed um, bone meal to the um, uh, to the to the tree so if we put that in there and turn it on manually suddenly there's a tree so we'll turn this back on again as well um, and we'll turn this one off because it's expensive in, in power. Uh, but again, it's mining the tree out, as, as we saw before. Thunk, there we go. And a new uh, and a new sapling gets put in place. And actually, and, and then the uh, this will continue to... Well, if this was left turned on, it will continue to feed fertilizer to the tree. Now, growing a tree seems to take a, a random amount of time and or fertilizer. So it's hard to say exactly. So I think that one grew so quickly because it was nearly ready to grow. I then came along and shoved the bone meal in, which gave it the little little bit of extra oomph it needed to grow. So this probably won't take as long to grow as it normally would because it's had some bone meal. And again, down here, we've got now slightly more wood in here. We've still got the, the sap growing and that's all working quite nicely. So this this was a thing that I believe Al made this in the during the stream in the week when I wasn't here. So uh, well done there. That's quite an interesting machine and it's simple and straightforward enough that I understand it so um, even even more impressive there I also discovered that I've actually had an iron hook in my inventory for absolutely ages I just haven't been using it because I've f forgotten I got it so I'm gonna need to spend some time playing with this now and just getting used to the physics of using it and how you drag yourself up on onto edges like this like that apparently um, so that's gonna be extremely useful for getting around when I can't be bothered to use the um, slime sling because the slime sling is a faff and a pain um it doesn't quite have enough range for these this building to cross oh i've oh yes because i've got the um because this is an iron hook i can i can put out two hooks at once and if i do that then i'm held halfway between them like this so that might possibly be useful who knows but it's a it is a thing that i have and i must must remember to must remember that i've got it and start trying to use it a bit more often so yes that is a thing What's i don't know what this is this is a mechanical artisan. I'm sure Al will tell us all about this in his in his video, assuming it is his thing. If not, somebody else will in the next stream, or come along and ask about it, because I don't really know what that does. I've also picked up lots and lots of different types of food. So Mike has been very busy in the in the kitchen cooking up all kinds of delicacies and and some tofu based things. So I, I've been in and collected lots of these, and you can see these all say not yet eaten. The more things, for every 50, 50 unique things you eat, you gain an additional heart of health down here on your health bar. So eating lots and lots of different things is quite literally good for my health. So let's eat this um, tofu, tofu ton. That sounds like something you'd sleep on. It's horrible. Um, there we go. So that's um, give, that's giving me an, another thing that I have now eaten. Uh, I could go down and check the book to see how many things I've eaten in total, but um, I'm, I'm not going to. It's a bit of a trek. That covers a lot of what I've done, but um, I did do I did do a little bit of white magic uh, related stuff as well over in the over in the tower as 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 as, as a traditional. Ow! <laughs> also flying into walls with the uh, elytra hurts a bit, so I need to learn not to do that quite so much. So yes, up here, what have I been doing? Well, I've made um, I've made a jewel jeweler's workshop, so I can start making jewelry in this. That's um, mildly interesting. I started work towards some of the. Um, white magic quest line so let's have a white magic tier two here we go so i've made some i've made a spark um this is a thing that is basically there for moving mana around between pools or at least allowing you to use mana from a pool that wouldn't otherwise be in range so i can put i believe i can put a spark on top of this pool and then if i had something else that used mana that was 25 up to 25 squares away so over here somewhere perhaps i could put another spark on that and it would draw from that mana pool even if it wasn't technically supposed even technically in range I believe, or I suspect, I haven't actually tested this, but I suspect you can have multiple mana pools with sparks on and join them all together into a sort of a chain and then pull from one end and it will pull from pull mana all the way from the other end. But I don't know if that's actually true. Um, answers in the comments if you know better than me, because I honestly haven't, I'm, I honestly don't know about that. We'll have to wait and see. I also, so that's, that, that would allow me to make the jeweler's workshop. And from here, I can start making bands of mana, uh, which allows you to, basically, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a ring you can wear that allows you to carry mana with you. Um, there's a band of aura. I don't know what that does because I can't make them yet. But there's, there, there are things. 
Um, I also made a couple of flowers, and the, no, a few flowers, the Agricarnation, the Narcillimus, and the Gorum, Gorum, Gormarillis. These are all a bit of a pain to make, actually, because they all use um, these runes. And runes, especially, uh, are, especially the runes of, of seasons, are quite an effort to make. So this one, for example, I needed to go off. I found some toast. Fortunately, there, were, there was toast in the kitchen, so that was easy. I just nicked that. And hamburger, I, nicked, I was able to nick from the kitchen as well. Um, some red was easy because I just grabbed a red petal, got lots of that. Yellow petal block, I fortunately had one of those in storage, so again, that was fairly easy. But then I had to make the rune of summer, which requires a rune of air and a rune of earth, which and, and luminescence and aquamarine and spray and neighbor. And a rune of earth requires mana steel and tinningers and boga. Oh dear, this, yeah, so this is a bit complicated and a bit of a faff. So I spent a lot of time running around getting all of the ingredients, bringing them up to, um, to this. Um, uh, runic altar and making the and making the runes on it and then running back downstairs to make try and make the actual thing I, I wanted and um, all of that was done over here in the petal apothecary, apo apothecary and that's basically you dump some water in it from the infinite water source here you get petals appropriate petals out of your um, storage system here and throw throw them and some seeds in and all of the other miscellaneous ingredients and pop it turns into a flower now I haven't used any of these flowers because they're I mean, this one, to, we do have quite a lot of food, so I could put one of these potentially down in the kitchen area uh, with another um, mana pool next to it and allow people to just throw spare food into it if we've got too much of anything. And this will then eat the food and turn it into mana. So that might be quite useful. Um, and we can, yeah, we can transfer them. We transfer it into a mana pool, possibly then into a mana minecart and use that to transport it around. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes, see what we, what we actually need uh, and where we need it. Similarly, the um, agricarnation can turn that. Oh no, this one, this one, this one pulls pulls plants up in an area around it. That's not so probably not so useful because if we're assuming it's oh no, sorry, no, take it back. No, it causes growth ticks, so it'll make plants grow more quickly. So that might be quite useful to have in the um, in the mystical agriculture area where we're growing plants that will create. Um, magical have magical properties that can be used to make resources so that would be quite a good fit over there especially as that's close to the food area so that and the agricarnation might work might make quite a good synergy for uh, for growing plants quickly um she'll have to have a word with pete and see if he fancies doing that because that's kind of his area but if i can go over and help him with the magic that might be quite useful the narslimus turns uh, slimes that spawn around it into um um in, in, into 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 mana. It's in slimes are in a rather odd place, so I don't know how useful this is going to be. But but maybe may, maybe that could be useful as another way of generating mana, especially as we've got one, and therefore I sort of feel we might as well use it, even if it's not the most useful thing in the world. That allowed me to make mana weave cloth, which is some sort of magical cloth, um, and. Yeah, um, so, so we'll investigate that further in, in the future. We've got some tools. So these tools are also, like I was saying with the um, the black magic, you can make tools that will automatically repair themselves using life essence. I can also make a pickaxe and a bow that will automatically repair themselves using mana. Um, again, this is something we haven't really bothered with because there are more effective, cheaper ways to repair things using tinkers. And these aren't tinkers tools anyway, so they don't get the special power up. So these are not particularly useful, which is why I've not bothered making them yet. But at some point I might produce them just for the novelty of, 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 of clearing out the quests. The mana weave cloth allowed me to make a teru teru bozu, um, which appears to be a small cutesy thing that can affect the weather. I've put that down over here and it seems to be some sort of cutesy squid thing uh, yeah i'm a bit disturbed by it um but apparently if you feed it sunflowers it'll make it stop raining and if you feed it some sort of was it lilies or no blue orchids i think then it might make it rain so if i need to, if i feel the urge to uh, manipulate the weather that would be a thing i could use and that i could see potentially being useful because there is there is a flower of some sort that uh, generates mana when it rains so if i combine so that plus this thing to make it rain could be again quite a useful synergy so these things are sort of stacking up these are possibilities that there are uh, there are definitely going to be and things that i might be able to use in the future so there's some potential there um i also made a botanical brewery which was a bit of a struggle to make because it required enormous quantities of things um Lots of the, living rock is fairly easy. You just put stone around these these um, pure daisies over here, and I need to make some more pure daisies at some point. Um, a mana steel block of was okay, um, but it's using up a lot of resources. More runes, illumination powder, which is kind of tricky to make, and, um, and I need to make a brewing stand, which is basically this is all sort of simple, mundane ingredients. So it wasn't too hard to put these together. 
Um, but the the uh, the illumination powder in particular was a bit of a mission um, because it required it, it just just because of all the things it required basically. It took me forever to find basalt for some reason. I also needed a load of liquid starlight, which is generated over here. You may remember this from a previous episode, but it's generated by this thing up here. Um, when you put cris rock crystals in here, it generates liquid starlight from the stars i guess and we can then keep store that in tanks uh we seem to have lots of spare space in this one now we'll, we have lots and lots of um of it available at the moment let's put another tank in and drain that there we go um just because well i feel like i might as well pull it out um there wasn't this much of it before someone and i suspect probably tristan has been uh, has obviously been here and helping or actually come to think of it i did leave a rock crystal in here generating um starlight uh so maybe it produced more than i expected uh, maybe it uh, maybe it was just me maybe it wasn't i don't know i'm sure tristan will tell me in the comments if he if he if he feels i haven't given him the credit he deserves <laughs> finally i made a novelty assembly table which is this this um blue halo thing so when you select it you get this blue halo around you one of them is a crafting table so i can go into here and i can make things and then when i've made something using this crafting table i can then right click on an any one of these slots and it will set that, so the last thing I made was the lava crystal, it will set that on the slot there, and then presumably if I want to make it again, I can just click on it and make it, but I don't have the, I don't have enough materials for that. So eventually, in theory, this will fill up with all of the things I make most often, so I don't need to keep trying to remember what the recipes are, so I can just learn, I, I can I can go out and it may, hopefully it'll make it a bit easier to make these things. Um, I haven't really used it for its memory yet, but I have used it as a portable crafting table because I lost um, my other portable crafting table I made which I've forgotten the name of this one the dark dark magic version of it is the wooden exalted crafter so this is similar in that it's a portable crafting bench that you keep in your inventory and you can just open when you want to use it but instead of having a memory this one has an inventory so I mean there's a sort of I can see the advantages of either one um, I think I've probably got enough backpack space that at the moment at least I feel like I'm probably okay with with this one but you never know. We'll see. We'll see in the future. I might decide that actually the exalted crafter was more useful, and, uh, and decide I want to switch back to it. So I've got the I've got the options available to me, which is quite nice. Now another thing. I think this was made. This was made quite a long time ago, but I haven't really. Um, I haven't. I haven't personally talked about it yet. So I'm going to fly over and uh, and show you. Is that we finally have a mob farm up and running. Um, I can't remember what creatures we're generating with it, but over here. Oop. <laughs> is our new shiny new mob farm i say shiny new this is so this is where the tower was the one that i, I talked about in an, in a previous episode that was that i went into and it was it turned out to be rather dangerous um so it's now been made a bit safer and turned into an actual mob farm so i believe over here there is a hatch in the ground i can open that and i can drop in uh like this and exactly how this works well uh let's see so there are uh, okay. You can put in a shulker box down here to fill it up with your, with loot if you want to. Um, we've got um, a couple of weapons here. So this one is presumably specced for producing as much XP as possible. This one is specced for I don't know what. I'm not. I'm not actually not quite sure exactly how any of this works because I've not had any sort of real involvement with it. But essentially, we've got a. Um, a system where you can come in here you can get your whatever weapon you use um i tend to use the um the sentient sword because it generates the the will as well which i need for magic although we now have rather a lot of it from other people using it so i can come in here and if i want i can do do the stabby stabby and the point is the all these mobs that come in here are um in a position where they they can't attack me but i can attack them as to, to my heart's content and eventually they all they will die as you can see they will drop various things that go presumably into these chests. So yeah, we've got an Osmium chest plate has been made. We've got some rotten flesh, we've got graves, blah, 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 some loot bags, feathers, swords, all these sort of things and some solidified experience and a raw chicken. Okay, I've not eaten a raw chicken yet. Yum. Um, so that goes, they, that automatically gets dumped into these chests. This, I don't know what this, oh, this is. A, this is a dropper. I'm not sure what that does. Or what it's there for, rather. These mobs are still dying. Are they fighting among themselves? Maybe they are. Um, and then I think this is a system then to allows you to, if you want, if you can come along here and you can put a shulker box on there and it will automatically dump all of the stuff out of this chest into your shulker box so you can take it away with you. These swords are presumably better for various things. So this, as I say, this one I think is going to get you more XP. This one gets you more... I, I don't... I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't know what lazy mode does. Let's hit the button and see what happens. Well, there are lots of explosions killing all the mobs off. 
I'm going to assume that that's blowing up fireworks or something and is therefore a limited resource. Maybe that's what this... There's a sound muffler. Hopper. I don't... I don't... I have to admit, I don't know what any of this stuff does. Um, so, so hopefully somebody else will do a video about the... Um, in a bit more detail about the mob farm and tell you tell you about it. I just want to let you know it's here and it generates stuff. And now if we look in here, there's more mildly useful stuff i think we're probably going to just melt all these pickaxes and shovels and things down for uh, for future for, for use as um, as raw ingredients but you know that, that's a perfectly good way of uh, of obtaining ingredients i suspect all right let's try and get back out of here now there have been a few other things done as well um let's see so we've had tristan says he's made he's made it um some, he's made a, a, a manual lava fabricator um uh, so uh, no an automated lava fabricator rather um I don't know where that is, unfortunately. Um, but or or even how it works. So I'm hope, hope hopefully somebody else will explain that in their video. And by somebody else, I mean uh, Al because he's the only other one who makes videos. Maybe it's up here. I do remember. I think I remember seeing something up here. Um, well, there's some lava on it. Uh, magma crucible. Basic drawer. I don't know. Somebody else will have to explain this because I don't know how. I don't know what this is or how quite how it works. But as I say, as I say, I'm sure somebody will. He made the uh, compressed diamond that allowed me to get on with some of the dark magic. And he's made a, apparently a botanic void miner, which produces plants and wood. But uh, we'll have to find out what that does later. Uh, he's also starting on work on an explosion room. Now, an exploding is what we what we term it when you go th when you go in and um, claim a large number of quests at once. So, for example, if I look in if I look in tier two of the main if I look in tier one of the main quest line, yeah, there are lots of these blue highlighted ones, and these are ones where I've not claimed the rewards for that quest being completed. So I can go in here, I can claim these things by clicking on the claim button, and that will quickly fill up my inventory because my inventory isn't very big because this is Minecraft. So if you claim all quests, your inventory fills up and up and up till it's full, and then everything else just goes and lands on the floor all around you. So an explosion room is a room where you go in to do that, and then it's got hoppers in the ground that will pick up anything you drop and put it into chests for you, or even better, tra automatically transport it into the into the storage system. So all the stuff that you've generated that is actually going to be useful for the um, the rest of, the rest of the uh, players will automatically be transferred over into the storage system down here. Ow. <laughs> um, and then anything that isn't quite so useful will just be dumped into these storage chests here, which at some point, which gradually get sort of tidied up and sorted out over time. Um, may, in theory, maybe, but in practice, not really, because <laughs> there's a there's there's a lot of junk that we generate, including bone meal for some reason. There's a lot of bone meal here. We definitely should have that somewhere so that it's known about. Finally, if, as far as things I've been told about go, um, if we if we go nip over here to the um, the portal room, and Try and be brave. Dive through the portal into the nether. Mike has made what he's described as a poor man's wither skeleton farm. Um, and I believe that's, yes, that's that's this thing here. So you come here, you go, hello, is there anybody out there? And if you're lucky, or unlucky, depending on how you look at it, a wither skeleton might come over. And um, oh, there's a, some XP there, I think. Let's... Um, Turn on my wand of picking things up. There we go. I can grab it from here. <laughs> that was that was actually quite a good use of it. So if you stare out the window for long enough, a, a wither skeleton might come over to investigate, and you can then poke it with your sword from a safe distance. Um, and there's a, a chest down here, and presumably, yes, there's some. You can almost see. A ho ho there's a. That's not a wither skeleton, but it might do. Um, there's a hopper just out there, which probably pick, presumably picks up the wither skeleton's drops and puts them into the chest here. So eventually that um, spinny thing will come out. The blazing juggernaut will come over here. will be in range. I can bop it a few times from the relative safety of through this window. It then dies. Its drops go in here. And we've got some more blaze powder. So you see that's the... That's the um, it's very, very manual because you come over here and you have to attract the uh, attract the denizens of um, of the nether yourself. But... It allows you to it allows you to harvest the uh, harvest the drops in, uh, in in reasonable levels of safety. So that's quite nice. Well done there. And finally, that is well. I say and finally. That was the and finally. That is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Uh, we've been. Um, we. I feel like we've been quite busy. It's taken me quite a long time and quite a lot of talking to uh, produce this episode. So I like. I would like to say that's been. That, that means we've been busy and, and done lots of useful stuff and a few fun things as well, like um, being able to. Uh, 
learning to fly and make firework noises, which is always nice. Um, so yes, it's been a good and productive couple of sessions, even if I was only at one of them. Um, maybe that's why it's been good and productive, I wouldn't like to say. I tried to pull up too sharply and lost all, lost all speed and clearly stalled my elytra. Never mind. So yes, if you want to see us getting on with all of this uh, in in real time, you can and and see every, and, and talk to everyone else as well. You can come along on a um, on, on on a Monday evening where we'll be uh, play, playing uh, playing this and uh, and making some more progress. On Wednesdays, I should be playing uh, Factorio Space Exploration. That's my other um, and admittedly more popular stream. So that's doing quite well at the moment. So please please come along and help boost the numbers for that as well. And these update videos come out at the weekends, of course, and uh, to give you a give you a bit of an idea of what happened on the streams if you weren't able to come along and watch it. And there's the GTA videos coming out on Thursdays as long as I actually have the time to make them because they're kind of time consuming. Um, and I'd like to produce more um, how-to videos as well, with for the um, particularly for uh, sort of some of the more obscure Factorio mods like uh, like LTN and space exploration. And um, we'll see what else I have time for as time goes by. I, I want to do more carpentry, but that's even more time consuming. So, thank you for watching. As I say, there's plenty more on the channel to watch, and I'll see you next time.